Hey, this is Michael Gilbert from Flossum and Jessam, and you're listening to Gino on Rockin' Radio. Your new studio album, Black in the Water, was released. Congratulations, Michael. How do you feel about it? Thank you. Welcome. Oh, uh, man, I'm, I'm feeling great about it. Like, we, we've had overwhelming response on, on uh, uh, the good reviews, you know? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I, gotta, I gotta say this, you know, because it's my band. I gotta say, you know, we're getting really great reviews and stuff like that. But, man, it's really over-the-top reviews with... Uh, Um, what people are saying about it. So I'm, I'm impressed with that, and I'm very, very grateful, and I love that people are enjoying it. Fantastic. When and where did you record this album, Michael? Um, this was, uh, it, it was recorded over the last year, uh, actually the last year and a half. And, and we all have home studios, uh, and we've, we've done everything from our home studios here, and uh, mm -hmm. passed files back and forth, and revamped, and... and uh, rearranged everything mm -hmm. and and it was originally due out in January of 2021 but due okay. to obvious circumstances the pandemic and stuff it's because of that pandemic yeah, yeah you know but even if there wasn't a pandemic we'd still do it from home uh, just because that's where we're comfortable uh, and we've done our last few records uh, mm -hmm. from uh, from our studios and they seem to it seems to be working pretty good for us yes sometimes you you have more inspiration in your own place exactly like uh you know instead of going in at certain times like i could be i could be laying there sleeping and then have an idea and go okay i, I get up go to my studio re record whatever i need to record then it's on tape and then i don't have to worry about it anymore Oh, yeah, of It's course. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, exactly. Is there any difference between <laughs> this new album and the previous End of Chaos, Michael? Yes. Uh, it, okay, so when we did this record, we had a lot... Well, actually, let me go back a little bit. When we started and we did uh, our self-titled record, and then we did End of Chaos, and then we've done Blood in the Water, we've had a lot of people that w were asking, how are you guys going to top the End of Chaos? You know, that you guys did a great record. And, you know, good luck. They're saying, well, good luck trying to top it. So we were a little nervous going in the studio and, and, and doing it, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, the finished product came out, and we all just kind of looked at each other and went, like, I think we, we came up with something that's either as good as End of Chaos or even better. My personal th uh, opinion, I think we did a little bit better. I think we did a lot better, actually. And I'm not just saying that because I'm pushing our new record. I really believe that this is our best record that we've ever done. Okay, okay. I, yes, I, I listened to your recording. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Thank you. I don't know. You're very welcome. If you could choose okay. two of your own studio albums as the most significant influences of this new record, what albums would you choose and why? Oh, uh, well, actually, the, the first record, for sure, that was our, uh, that was our watermark on the, uh, 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 the metal scene. That's what put us on the map, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's got classic songs like Hammerhead and and uh, uh, the the next record after that, the most significant one after that, I believe is going to be Blood in the Water. Uh, I think you know our first record and our last record are are going to be our two biggest monuments that we've ever done. Wow, fantastic, Michael! It is true that Chris Cornell of Soundgarden co-wrote a song in a Flo and Jessam album. How was that? Yes, he, he did. Uh, I never got to meet him, which I'm, I'm really sorry about that. But, you know, I wish I would have. But he did. Uh, he submitted some lyrics for a song called "The Message" on our Quattro record. Uh -huh. And uh, what a what a great lyricist and singer that guy was. And, Fantastic! Uh, I saw him. He's amazing. Uh, he was amazing. Yeah, ama amazing. And just Super to be able intelligent. To have something on my career. Yeah. Just just to be able to say that you know I. Have, I'm on a record where Chris Cornell did some work on. I'm I'm I, I'm so grateful for that. You know, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he's the guy's a legend. Exactly. <laughs> that was in Cuatro in that album in Cuatro. Yes, uh, yeah. Cuatro. I love the album when the sword came down. In my opinion, that record represents a new chapter in approach to different sounds to Flossang and Jetson. I love this album when the sword came down. That yeah, there's, it's a great record. It's got some great songs on it. But I think it needs uh, a, a remix and a remaster uh, mm -hmm. just to kind of get it back out there again and get it noticed again. I, I understand it's hard to find 
on vinyl, and it's hard to find in, on CD, too. So, yes, I have the uh, tape. We're working on that right now. I yeah. have the tape. Oh, you have the tape. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, old school. The yeah. original. <laughs> <laughs> <Right on. laughs> oh, yeah. And, Michael, you've been in the music business since the 80s, and you have witness of explosion of digital music, streaming, and change in the music industry, like small venues, fewer big festivals. And so my question is, if you could choose anything about it, what would you change it? You know, if you could change something. What would I change? Yes. If you yeah. should change something in the music industry. I've never had that question. I've never had that question before. I, I, if I was to change something um, uh, about the business, yes, uh, I wouldn't change anything about the venues or the festivals or the small shows or the crowds or anything like that. Mm -hmm. The worst thing is uh, how some of these uh, bigger business are taking artists' uh, money. Uh, like royalties have gone way down. Uh, That's and, unfair. You know, play the playlists and stuff like that that are out there, they don't support the artist. Even though the artist is on there, mm -hmm. it's not supportive, you know? And it's, it, it's not really fair. You know, I heard something about a certain person saying they, uh, that artists need to write more songs for his platform and if they want to make money, you know? Mm -hmm. We had 40, 45,000 spins on that platform. I think we made a dollar thirty-seven. Oh my god! So, that's not cool, but you know that, that's that's cool. the way the business is going. And for some reason, they think it's okay. It's really negative. But you know what? Our fans—they buy our shirts, they buy our records, they yes, they yes. support us. So yes, yes, we got beautiful fans. We got beautiful fans. Yes, the, the fans are, are the more important right now because if you continue with a platform, in my opinion, the streaming Absolutely platform true. will destroy the music. Would you pay? How could you pay the rehearsals? How could you pay your guitar? How could you pay everything <laughs> with the money? It's impossible. It's hard to buy a guitar with a dollar thirty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Any concerts on the way, Michael? Uh, Yes, we're getting ready to announce something. Uh, tell me, tell probably me. Probably by the end of the week. Okay. And then we've got we've got Europe in January and February with Accept. Wow. And then we come back. Wow. And then uh, with Accept. We've got, some, we've got wow. something really special, really special after that when we come back. Uh, did you hear a, a, a smaller did, tour? Yeah. But I think you guys are really going to love who, who we're going out with. Fantastic. Accept. They are promoting their new record. Yes. That's great. Yeah, well, Oh yeah, we got. We're full of uh, getting full on concert dates, and it, it, we're going to be all booked up this year. It's going to be great. Uh, we're going to be working year round in 2021. I'm looking forward to it. Any plans in Canada? Any concerts on the way? Ab absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. The last time you came here was in 2019 in September. I remember in Toronto yeah. at, at least. I saw you in Toronto. Fantastic show. Oh, thank you. I'm sure we're going to be back there. I, I know they're working on dates for there right now, so currently. Oh, fantastic. Any last words in this interview, Michael? Um, no, I, I, you know, I'm, really, I'm super glad you're supporting our record. I'm glad you love it and, and you're digging it. And for the fans out there, I just, I, I, I say this, it, it's one of the quotes from AK's vocals on the very first song, Blood in the Water, come out to a Flossom show. Be slaves to the slaughter. Come out. Let's have a good time. Everything's opening back up. Let's let's be relentless and get into a frenzy of metal. Yeah. Where can we buy your record to support the band? There's a few different uh, avenues you can go on. You can go to AFM Records, which is our record label. I know. And you can pick it up there. You can pick it up on... Yeah, you can get vinyl. There's box sets available there. You can pick it up on Amazon. You could also pick it up on iTunes. And very soon, it will be available on our website uh, as soon as we get stock going. And it should be available at your, your local record store at this time, too.